I am not a fountain pen person. That's a world that I just feel like I'm not. Um, it's an intimidating spot for me. Okay. Now hear me out. <laughs> um, I got my tax returns back and I figured uh, like, yes, I felt like fountain pens were kind of unapproachable, but so are taxes. So why not just like kill one with the other and dive in um, and, you know, see what it's about. So, um, hi, my name is Tori. I am a librarian and I love stationery. And I recently became introduced to the fountain pen world through the planner community because they're kind of, um, they overlap, especially if you have a Hobonichi cousin because that paper, the Tomoe River paper really works well on, um, I'm sorry, fountain pens really work well on the Tomoe River paper. And, um... I recently, whoa, 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 stuff's happening over here and you can't see it, bless, by Dom. Anyways, I recently, and by recently, I guess I mean like a couple months ago, so not recently, um, <laughs> I picked up the standard beginner's fountain pen, the Pilot Kakuno, and um, I was vibing and I was having so much fun. And, well, okay, I w like I was having fun and two weeks later I was like, why aren't you writing? That's why, <laughs> um, because I completely used up the entire cartridge, like bone dry. So yeah, if you can see, I, um, I realized then that like maybe fountain pens aren't that bad um and I really do think that this is a great starter like everybody says it is and um I really I don't mind holding it it you know I know that there are cuter kakunos out there with the transparent versions but blue is my favorite color and I don't know this combo is giving early 90s pastel and pink vibes that my mother was really into. Pastel blue and pink vibes, I'm sorry. So that was like the first pen I got. And then I just kept falling deeper into a hole. So, you know, when the tax return came, I decided to spend some of it on some affordable fountain pens. Nothing crazy here. But you know, if you know anything about fountain pens, you already know where I went because I'm obsessed with this brand. I find it very appealing to look at. Um, and so this one, this is uh, the ink converter for a Lamy Safari and that one's on the way and I'll add it to this video later on. Um, once it comes in, I'm just too excited not to film immediately. Um, but, so yeah, I got a Twisby Eco T. And this is the back. That's what it looks like. Yup, that's what it looks like. <laughs> um, if I can get this open, oh my, oh, that might help to, you know, maybe take that out. So I got a medium nib as I think as well as an extra fine or fine, I'm not sure, but I got a medium nib because if you, um, anybody saw the video where I went to um, Paper and Ink Arts where I purchased the Pilot Kakuno, I also purchased um, Winter Night Diamond Ink and I think it has some shimmer to it. So I wanna get a medium nib because everything I'm seeing it recommends um, anything with shimmer should probably have a bigger nib so it doesn't clog up your feed. Um, so yeah, I'm not gonna like fully disassemble and like get into it, but 
I got the Twisby Eco Tea in Transparent. And this is the um, medium nib. So that's what that looks like. You can see the, will it focus? Yeah, I'm sorry y'all. But yeah, that's the Twisby. I mean, who doesn't, I feel like if this is like, this is your starter and this is your second one. Um, just with everything that I've seen in the fountain pen community, Twisby is a really approachable brand so far that I've seen and I am so excited to finally have some. There are some really cool iridescent ones that I eventually want to purchase, but I don't know if I'll get to them. They're like $80, whereas these are like a $30 price point. Um, they're like iridescent. Um, I don't even know. It's like a purpley kind of color and I adore it. And um, yeah, it's just $80 because of the design. So yeah. And then I got a transparent blue and a, I think it's a, yeah, it's a fine nib. So yeah, I'm really excited to play with these. I have some ink coming as well that I'll show you later on, but this is the first batch of my fun little fountain pen haul that I am excited to dig into. Um, I... The reason this all got started along with like watching just fountain pen um, videos from people who are also in the planner community was that I purchased this A6 journal and it's coffee stained and gross at this point, but it's actually my reading journal. And so um, I had been using the Pilot Kakuno on the reading journal and this is just an A6 cafe note book and it has 300 and 84 pages of Tomoe River paper and the pen, y'all. The pen cannot be beat on this paper. I just, I'm obsessed with it. So um, that's kind of what sold me on the very unapproachable fountain pen world. And so I am going to leave off here. And the next time you'll see me in this video is for when the other stuff comes. So I'm really excited to share with you guys how it works and all of the different things that I got. So um, yeah, that's what my first um, haul looks like. And again, I didn't purchase these with money that I normally have access to. This was from my tax return funds. So it's really hard for me sometimes to justify purchasing things when bills have to get paid and things like that. So. Um, yeah, it was a fun money spend type of situation that I probably wouldn't have spent the money on these otherwise. So yeah, I'm excited and on to the next thing. This is the second part of this, um, like little haul video that I'm currently working on. And I just kind of wanted to show you what else I've been waiting on to come in the mail. Um, and so I got these highlighter pens. Um, they're supposed to not bleed. We will see, but it's a dual tip situation. So um, I really love the, the tones. They're kind of like more pastel. And so you have the chisel tip on the top. If you can see that there. And then you have a finer tip on the bottom, but it's not like a fine liner type of tip. So I appreciate that the, the bottom tip is thicker as well. Um, oftentimes it really gets on my nerves when the discrepancy between the tips is so different. Um, so yeah. And then I got a bunch of inner gel Clina refill. Well, they're really just inner gel refills. They're not for a specific one, but it is the needle point because my Clina officially dried out. So I also got, let me go grab my scissors. All right, I also purchased some inks. If I can get this open.
just to test them because I haven't had these before. Um, so this is Diamine Earl Grey. This is Diamine Imperial Purple. And then this is Diamine Aurora Borealis. And I think I said in the last video that I had some Diamine ink, but I've, I've misused that. Or <laughs> I didn't name it correctly because I was so anxious about waiting on these. But I also have the Dominant Industry Winter Night. And it's part of the Pearl series. It does have a little bit of a, uh, like a sheen or a shimmer. And so I inked my medium nib Twisby that I got in the mail um, with that color just in case. I am very new to <laughs> fountain pens so I didn't want to mess anything up and everything that I see says that you know you need to use a bigger nib um, for shimmery inks. Now I'm not sure you would classify winter night as a shimmer full-on shimmer but it does have a sheen to it so I just want to be careful. Oops, sorry if I'm shaking. All right and then the final one of the final purchases is this beauty. Um, I purchased this and I'm so excited to ink it but it comes with a blue cartridge. I'm that is what that converter was for that I had in the first half, if I can find it. I do have the pilot converter for the Kakuno because you saw that I ran out of that as well. Nestled in the back here. So this is the Lamy Safari um, and it has this converter that will go in it. Um, and this is kind of like a, I don't know if you can really tell on camera, but it's kind of got a little green um, sheen to it but so um, yeah it comes with the blue cartridge that I almost just dropped straight out and this little removable bit and you would put the cartridge in there press down and then go for it what? so I think I didn't, might just use the cartridge for this because I want to get used to it before I go any further but I do believe this was the fine nib I'm not quite sure if I remember but it has even like a window right here to see the, see the ink um I guess like vestibule or whatever you want to call it so that is like I could put something through that hole because it is completely like through the pen barrel but yeah so that is another kind of look at what I purchased and I'm really excited to get started and to start using some of these pens more regularly um if you saw and that's not even a twist that's just a clip if you saw the first I mean obviously I'm just really excited to start using these and getting more familiar with the world granted I don't first I didn't plan on buying any of this to begin with and now I'm gonna tell you that I don't plan on getting super deep into the fountain pen world because um, I, I, I plan personally on staying at the very um, I guess the more cheaper end of the spectrum because I even though some of the pins on the higher end are really gorgeous I don't know I'm still not in the spot where I feel like spending a couple hundred dollars on a pen um it's just not it's still not computing in my brain <laughs> so that is kind of where I'm at with that and I have one last thing to show you and so I'm going to move over to that all right y'all so this is my desk setup it's kind of janky because I have the light and I was filming. Um, normally my keyboard sits over there um, and my printer is always acting crazy. So that's why stuff's piled on it right now. But what I purchased, so I have this pen caddy um, 
that I actually ended up purchasing from AliExpress like two years ago. But I have been watching a lot of Julie's plans. <laughs> so I pulled the trigger and I think what I'm going to do is end up kind of switching things around. And I'm going to set you guys over here and hopefully you'll be able to see that process. But I'll speed it up so it's not so tedious to watch. Um, but I've got to figure out a system as for how I'm going to change these out um, into an iris storage compartment that I purchased. Um, and it's too tall to be up here and I have stuff already up there. So I got to figure this out. And I thought it'd be fun to kind of show you guys what I end up doing. So here we go. Alright, my hands are shaking because I haven't eaten, so I apologize if this video is a little shaky, but what turned, what was a haul turned into a bit of a clean with me, I guess. So I rearranged so I could fit the iris container in that corner, um, and I have like a little bit of an L desk here. And we inherited my husband's grandparents' house, so there's a lot of like this custom woodwork in here and things like that but um so I use these shelves for like comic books that are um vintage as well as some notebooks and different things like that and then of course I have all of that up there um but so I cleaned all of this off my Tombow markers go in there now um and I kind of put it by um priority of what's on the right so let me kind of get closer for you here so up top I have all of these fine liners that I showed you a close-up of that I've had for years and these are the only ones that I put in color-coded order because you know I, I don't use them a lot and I probably should and that's another thing that I really appreciate about this kind of like random clean with me that I just ended up doing because it helped me see like a lot of what I have and I need to use some of it so um, I'm right-handed, I'm dominant right hand, so I put everything that I am constantly reaching for on the right and towards the bottom. So um, I'm constantly using some of these tools and plan with me's. If you know, um, this is the bunny cutter, my um, obviously my tweezers, some correction tape and glue. These are post-its. Um, these are just your standard ivory average I almost said every like I was trying to say average and every day in the same word so anyways <laughs> um they are a lot of pins that have a lot of different like essentially they're like little souvenir pins that I've gotten over the years from different places and people so they're not like name brand cool pins but <laughs> I keep them for memory's sake and if I just need a pin to write with really quickly um, this is what I reach for the least amount of times. This is like um, an additional correction tape that's out, but I don't want to throw it away. A mini stapler, some glue sticks. Um, this brush is to clean a keyboard a little bit. Um, so it's just like stuff I don't really use on a daily basis. But then I put some of my fountain pens here for now. Um, then I have my gel pins that I reach for the most and then I put 
the refills along with pencil lead and erasers and sharpeners in here. And then I have all my mechanical pencils there. So then I go back over. These are all my brush pens. These are all my um, drawing pen. That's a brush pen. Excuse me. <laughs> um, these are all my like, this is my mono, um, Tombow mono drawing pens and my Sigma microns. Um, just all in there. Then I have some highlighters here. These are like Sharpies and little markers that I got because I needed some quick markers for a project really quick that was not, it didn't need quality stuff. So I picked those up at the dollar store. Very simple. These are all of my, um, like my jelly rolls and uniballs that are really creamy and I use them for, um, either correction or, or like the ink is just creamy. So I do have some zebras in here. Um, but it's like milky flavor flavors. Wow. <laughs> it's milky ink colors. And so I put them kind of all in their own area because I love the jelly roll moonlights. I think these are like a 0.10 nib. So like it's, or a 10 millimeter nib, I guess. Um, well, that just came right out. So the iris does have these little tabs right under. I don't know if you can really tell this, that little tab right there that stops the drawer from coming out, but I think it has to have a little bit more in it. <laughs> um, these were highlighters that I purchased off of Amazon. They're from Mr. Pin. Um, it has a chisel and a felt tip. More um, pens. These are my Pilot Friction. These are 0.7. Um, I got them when I was using my plum paper back in 2022, I believe. So I still kind of sometimes use them. These are just basic highlighters. These are all my mild liners. Up top, like I said, are those fine liners. And then over here is my stamps that I have and my ink pad. Um, back, I purchased these when I was bullet journaling and these two are just empty for now. So I moved all of that. I have the um, ink, or excuse me, the fountain pens here along with some inks and some dot stickers and just random tchotchkes. But over here is where I put my um, brush markers because the one thing I do not like about the iris, let alone, I think it's more of like a, a Tombow issue than it would be a container issue, but these are so long that, I mean, I did some research for a couple of weeks trying to find something that would hold these pins this way um, there are a lot of drawers that you could store them this way, like horizontally, but I don't know. Would you consider this? This isn't vertical, maybe perpendicular. I'm not sure. Um, but basically it's just, they, they're too long to store in these drawers. So I figured I would put them in this that I'd already had for a very long time. Um, just an acrylic pen holder. And I have some other, um, markers in here along with my Tombows. I have recollections brand brush markers that I got back in the day along with my Crayola super tips some Ticonderoga the all-star of pencil if you don't know you don't know that's not even Ticonderoga that's rose art are these all rose art yeah wow out here trying to brag and I don't even have them this pen was given to me by a former boss of mine who went to Morocco and she brought this back and then I have these really gross looking scissors that I'm always ashamed to share on camera because I've had them since elementary school and they're nasty. But that is all. Oh, I also have my clean color dot markers in here as well. So I have those two just sitting right here. And so I cleaned off my desk, made sure that it was good to go and whoa, kind of have it situated like that. It's not the cutest setup. Um, but it's functional and that's what I need. So these are just like sterilite containers under on the L shape. And that is what I have been up to with my hauls. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you've made it this far, I apologize for my whiny dog in the background. And last but not least, I hope you'll consider giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to my channel to help me grow. Um, but either way, thank you again for watching and I'll see you in the next one.